Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to create Vexel art portraits from regular photos. The term Vexel is a combination of the words vector and pixel. There are many derivations of Vexel art, however, they all have one thing in common. They're entirely pixel-based raster art that imitates many of the characteristics of vector-based graphics. Open a clear, focused, high-resolution photo of a face. The first step is to check its resolution. Press Alt-Ctrl-I on Windows or Option-Command-I on a Mac. You can also go to Image and Image Size. The width and height can be pretty much any amount, but make sure its resolution is 300 pixels per inch to ensure that the filter settings will have similar results as mine. To zoom your image in or out, press Ctrl or Command and the plus or minus key on your keyboard. Next, we'll separate the subject from its background by making a selection around the subject. There are many ways to do this, however, for this example, let's use the Quick Selection tool. If you're using version CC2020 or later, click the Select Subject button, which automatically makes a selection around the subject. If you're using an earlier version, drag the Quick Selection tool over the inside of your subject to select it. If you need to remove areas of the selection, press and hold Alt or Option as you drag over those areas. You can check your selection by pressing Q on your keyboard. Then, revert it back into a selection by pressing Q again. Once you have a selection, you can refine the soft or feathery areas like hair by going to Select. If you're using a version earlier than CC 2015.5, click Refine Edge. If you're using a later version, click Select and Mask. If you prefer to use Refine Edge, shift click Select and Mask. I did in-depth tutorials on both of these filters, so if you'd like to watch them, I provided their links in my video's description. Check Smart Radius, which detects smooth and hard edges. To adjust the brush's size, make sure the Caps Lock key is off and press the left or right bracket key on your keyboard. Drag your tool over the soft or feathery areas like hair. Check Decontaminate Colors. This will minimize color fringing of the background colors that may leach into our subject. Output it to a new layer with Layer Mask. We'll make a new layer directly below our isolated subject by control clicking or command clicking the new layer icon. We'll fill the empty layer with a gray color. To do this, click your foreground color and in the brightness field, type in 34, or you can type into the hexadecimal field 57 three times. Since our foreground color is now the gray color we just picked, press Alt or Option plus Delete to fill the empty layer with that color. Next, we'll convert our visible image into a smart object so we can modify it non-destructively. It'll also allow us to replace our subject with another without having to redo the effects. To do this, make the top layer active and shift click the bottom layer to make all the layers active. Click the icon at the upper right and click Convert to Smart Object. We're going to apply a lot of filters, but each filter and the order in which we place them is important to achieve the final result. Go to Image, Adjustments, and Shadows Highlights. Check Show More Options to open the highlights and adjustments. The shadows amount is 50%, the tone is also 50%, and the radius is 30 pixels. The highlights amount is 20%, the tone is 50%, and the radius is 30 pixels. The adjustments color is minus 100, and the midtone is plus 100. The black and white clips are 0.01% each. Go back to Filter, Sharpen, and Unsharp Mask. The amount is 500%, the radius is 5 pixels, and the threshold is 0 levels. Go back to Filter, Stylize, and Diffuse. Tick Anisotropic and click OK or press Enter or Return. 
We'll repeat this filter twice by pressing Alt Control F on Windows or Option Command F on a Mac. Press Enter or Return and press the same hotkeys once more. Press D on your keyboard to make your foreground and background colors black and white respectively. Go to Filter, Stylize, and Oil Paint. The stylization and cleanliness are both 10, the scale is 0.8, and the bristle detail is 10. The lighting is unticked. Go to Filter, Blur, and Surface Blur. Basically, Surface Blur blurs an image while preserving its edges. It reduces noise and grain. The radius specifies the size of the area sampled for the blur, while Threshold controls the tonal values that get blurred. For this image, make the radius 20 pixels and the Threshold 20 levels. Go to Filter and Filter Gallery. To see more of your subject in the preview window, press Ctrl or Command and the minus key on your keyboard a couple of times. Open the Artistic Folder and click Cutout. The number of levels is 8, the Edge Simplicity is 5, and the Edge Fidelity is 3. Go to Image, Adjustments, and Brightness and Contrast. Keep the brightness at 0 and make the contrast 100. Go to Filter, Sharpen, and Unsharp Mask once more. This time the amount is 100%, the radius is 5 pixels, and the threshold is 0 levels. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Levels. Make the midtone input level 0.9 and the highlight input level 240. Click the adjustment layer icon and click Gradient Map. Change its blend mode to color. Click the gradient bar to open the gradient editor. Have fun clicking your preset gradients to see how they affect your portrait. Or you can customize the colors by changing the colors in the gradient bar. For example, click the lower left stop, the color box, and find a color you like. Since I already know the color I want, I'll type it into the hexadecimal field. Click the lower right stop, the color box, and pick another color. If you want to replace the subject with a different face, Click the face to make it active, and double-click it to open its original source. Go to File and Open, or on version CC, go to Place Embedded, which automatically places the new face onto the original source document. Find and click the new face, and click Open or Place. Close the original source document, and when you see this message, click Yes to update the old face with the new face. If you'd like to see more detail in your portrait, hide the surface blur filter. If you prefer to see the face's original colors, hide the gradient map adjustment layer. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.